Hi, I'm Christina Pope, the Senior Research Editor with CoBank's Knowledge Exchange Division. I'm talking with my colleague, Ken Zuckerberg. He's the lead economist for grains, farm supply, and biofuels. Ken, you just wrote a really interesting report about the key risks that ag retailers are facing. Before we get into those, let's set the stage. So Ken, what does the situation for ag retailers look like right now? The situation is as follows. Ag retailers are coming off a very good year in 2022, and their financial results should remain favorable in 2023. Some of the headwinds include higher interest rates, rising labor costs, and broader economic uncertainty, but those are separate from the risks we'll discuss in this report. Um, In terms of other matters, spring planting season is almost underway, and ag retailers are about to get quite busy. Got it. So the industry is in a reasonably sound financial position. Uh, What are some of the risks facing ag retailers? So there's numerous risks facing ag retailers, and we really think about those in five different buckets, macro, financial, operational, business model, and regulatory risk. However, in my new report, I address three that I think is most important. First is changing customer needs. Farmers today are asking for more updated products and different types of advice. Second is lower farmer working capital. Compared to the last upturn in the crop cycle, farmers have less capital available today than they did prior. What this means is that whenever the cycle turns down in the future, they might have less dollars to spend on crop inputs, which would be a negative to the sellers of those crop inputs, the retailers. And then third, the industry is seeing an upward spike in property casualty insurance costs after several years of natural catastrophe losses. Okay, so I'm hearing changing consumer needs, less working capital, and rising costs of property casual insurance. What should ag retailers be thinking about to manage these risks? So while there's no silver bullet to counter all of these risks, I have two specific thoughts. First, I think retailers should sell more value-based alternative products, such as biologicals and specialty plant nutrients to address changing customer needs. Second, to address the insurance shortage situation, retailers should investigate alternative risk transfer mechanisms, including but not limited to captive insurance arrangements. Thank you so much, Ken. Ken delves even deeper into these issues in his new report, and I encourage you to read it. It's available on our website at cobank.com.